Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is that time of year again where I'm going to be showing you all another painting tutorial on how to paint a Christmas ornaments. Make your own on a budget. So these are really fun. They've been really popular with you guys and you're requesting them. So here it is. I'm excited to show you and introduce a new design this year. So I'm going to go over the supplies that you're going to need. Um, most of the stuff that I'm using is on a budget from a dollar store. I have a couple of other items that are from um, art stores that I cannot find at the dollar store. So depending where you're from, where you live, you may be able to find all of these items at a dollar store. Okay, so we've got some smooth foam balls and these are just standard size. They come in smaller and larger and we're going to add paint to it, paint on it like we would on a canvas, except the only difference is it's going to continuously go around uh, the ball. And we're gonna be using uh, a few small paint brushes and I'll go over those in just a moment. For our, the placement of our hook and our bow at the end of the tutorial, you're gonna need a little hole there for that. Um, so I just take the end of a paintbrush and I just gently poke through. You just wanna go down about that much, about an inch down into the ornament. Do this gently, don't push too hard, otherwise you could accidentally poke it through. So just find your center point and on the top and the bottom of these uh, balls, you'll find if you look really close, a little circle with some dots in it. That's your, your base point for the top and the bottom to center it. Okay, and you'll also see a little line, a faint line that goes through. I like to use that for my horizon line, something to go by just to keep me painting my landscape uh, straight so it doesn't end up going like this as I'm turning um, the ball around while I'm painting. What we do with the paintbrush in here is use it to hold onto the ball while we're painting. That way our hands won't get as messy. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier to turn and paint like that. Keep that in mind. Okay, so we've got um, some colors we're going to use here that I've, I'll have listed below the video in the description box as well. This is what I'm using. You can use anything you want or colors that are similar to this or these ones. So I've got Titanium White, uh, Neon Lemon Yellow, and Neon Red by Holbein Luminous um, Heavy Body Acrylics. I've also got a Blue Turquoise, specifically Blue Turquoise because I want more of a blue. And then I can also make Aqua Green Turquoise by mixing a bit of blue, lemon yellow, and white. And I'll show you that later on while we're mid-painting. And then I've got a little bit of Mars Black. And I'm gonna keep this so simple for you guys, easy, easy steps, so you can all follow along and paint this. Uh, okay, so the other things that you're gonna need for this painting are obviously a palette with your paint so you can mix colors up, a towel to dry your paintbrush off with, some water, and a few small paintbrushes. Um, for example, I've got a tiny micro mini liner brush here for smaller details, little windows and, and fence posts. And then I've got a filbert brush for covering larger areas, sky, foreground, um, maybe some trees. This is uh, number 10. This is a micro mini one. So somewhere in between these would be more on the small side. Use what you feel comfortable with and also what you're going to be painting on your ball. So if you're painting something really small, obviously, right, you're going to use a smaller brush. Okay, so we've got a few filbert brushes, liner brush. I've also got a few little mop brushes. Okay, so those are the brushes we're going to be using. You're going to need some sealer or varnish for your ornament. I always like to use a Mod Podge. This is high gloss. Um, you'll apply one to two coats of this and then I'll sprinkle on some glitter. And that takes me to this glitter I'm using right here. This is a fine, fine glitter, powdery glitter. It's iridescent. All it does is just enhance the painting and make it look so sparkly and magical uh, wherever you hang it. Okay, you're also gonna need a pair of scissors. We're gonna need scissors to cut our ribbon and I love to use organza. There's lots of ribbon options out there. I love organza. The sheer organza just helps to uh, make the ornament look so pretty and classy. Um, so this is a one inch. It comes in all different widths. You can get this from your dollar store or art store. You can get all of these products online as well. To apply the hook 
to the ornament, I'm gonna be using a, a longer hook like this. You wanna make sure you have a longer hook, not the shorter ones. I think that covers everything and I think we're ready to go ahead and get started. And the first color I'm gonna be using is a little bit of, and I hope you guys can see this, I'll just move my water in a little bit here. So I'll take a little bit of water and I'm gonna use a little bit of white and a little bit of my lemon yellow. I wanna have like a multicolored pastel -y sky. So I'll be adding a little bit of this and I'm just gonna brush around in sections, leaving a few spaces. This is when I'm gonna grip the ball and I'll turn around and add a little bit more. Sometimes I've got a little bit more yellow and sometimes I'll add a little bit more white to make it a bit softer. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush out. Dry it off. And I'm not gonna bring any paint up here or on the very base, not till the end, because I don't wanna get paint all over my fingers. The next color I'm gonna take is a little bit of white and red, and you can see what a pretty color that makes. And I'm gonna go around and add a little bit of this. So it doesn't matter what order you apply your paints in. You can start with red, you can start with turquoise. You just wanna have a little bit of each color. I'm gonna take a little bit of, just a little bit of that blue turquoise with some white. Not only will this look pretty when it overlaps part of the pink, it'll make that aqua green turquoise on the yellow. So I'll show you right here. Very pretty. You just can't go wrong with pastel colors. Okay, so I'm just gonna add this wherever. Now I can grab hold of this and turn it around. But yeah, this just makes for such a pretty soft palette. Very, very delicate. Now you can carefully go around the top and the bottom because we're gonna dry this off before we begin our next step. So just use that brush as a handle. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of white over the top. And then turn it over. I think I'll add a little bit of yellow. Let's make that aqua turquoise. And add a little bit down here on the bottom. Now to speed up the drying time, I'm just gonna use my hair dryer 
and I'll quickly dry this off and then we'll begin our next step. Before I do that, I don't want to forget to wash my brush out. Make sure that paint doesn't dry in my brush. Okay, so like I mentioned, I'm going to go back to using this brush. This is a medium size filbert brush. And what I want to do is take a little bit of my blue and a little bit of red, and I'm going to mix them up there. And we'll get a smoky plum color. And I'm going to start applying a horizon line. Use just a little bit of water to help pull that out. I'm going to leave a little bit of a space on either side in between so that we have an opening for our river to flow through or our creek. Okay, then the next thing I'm going to do is pull a line and I'm going to start to turn. It almost looks like it could be a staircase, but this is just going to be the side of the riverbank. And you just want to see how I'm slowly twisting. And that's how you get it to look like it's wrapping around and continuing around the ball. So you just have this never ending landscape. And then I just keep going. A little turn. So we get that kind of a spiral and it looks pretty. Okay, the next step, I'm going to continue using this brush. I'm just going to get a little bit more water and add some more red and blue. And I'm going to place my brush right on the line. And then I'm just going to gently pull and flick. I'm going to need a little bit more water. I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher. We're just going to create a little instant forest. So small, small, small flicks. And then larger, smaller, smaller, smaller. Again. And then I'll leave a little space there maybe for a cottage or a little cozy winter cabin. You can come down below and do the same technique. Just pull and flick down. If you want to create a little reflection in the water. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I'm going to take a little bit of my black now. And I'm just going to start tapping in the center. And I'm just going to grip the ball like this. And then I'll rinse my brush out. Okay, I'm going to go over to another brush now and start adding some trees. And I'll be using a liner brush. Now this one is a size one. Okay, I'm going to take some black, some red, a little bit of blue.
And I'm just gonna start coming in with a tree, a leaning tree. So a little wiggle on a slant and then pull at the base. Get a little bit more water on your brush. And just pull out a few branches. Don't worry about how the ends of your branches look too much because we're going to be covering them up with a little bit of uh, snow. So I just want to make some of my branches a little thicker before they get really thin because right now I've got a really thick tree trunk and really thin branches so it needs to gradually. So right here I'm just going to pull with the tip of my brush and then gradually let off on the amount of pressure. Okay, so there we've got one tree. I'm gonna twist over and add another one. This time I'm gonna come in on an angle this way. Wiggle, wiggle. And then I'll just pull a little bit here. Pull this in for the base of the tree. And I'll turn over here and we'll add another one. And this one, we will have a little bit straighter. You don't want to rest your ornament down. So this takes a little bit more steadiness. That's why I have my pinky resting here. And then I'll pull out at the base to the right, curl down to the left. A little bit of white and a little bit of red. I'm going to stay away from adding water to my brush. I just want to use straight paint and I want to get it mixed up there and a little ball to work with on the tip of my brush. And let's go back to our first tree. And I'm gonna be adding some snow to the branches and the tree trunk. I'm going to add a little bit along the bank here in the base of the trees. Pull, curve, and turn. OK, 
Okay, then I'll take some more. Some more of that pink on there. Just think of where that snow would land. And we'll just add a little bit down again, up and over in slope. And we'll go over to the next one. You really want to take the time to load your brush up. Okay, and a little bit again on the back there. my brush out. I think I'm going to add a sun right in here. I'm going to use a little brown brush for that. No water. I'll just add a bit of white and a circle. And then I'll go around with a little bit of white and yellow. Add a little bit reflecting down here. Okay, the next thing I want to do is add a little bit of uh, foliage. So I'm going to take a little bit of my red, a little bit of blue. going to make that little bit of a plum shade and I'm going to go over some of these branches and tap 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 and let's not forget about this one over here Add a little bit at the base. Okay, and then we'll take a little bit of white, mix that up with a bit of pink, even with some of that smoky plum color in there. Work that all out. And then you're just gonna line it up. I'm gonna take a little bit more of the white. You wanna apply it partially over that plum. Just 
so that you've got a bit of both colors. And if you take more white, it'll be even brighter. So I like to go back and add a little bit of white as well. Start adding some up here. Light little taps. And then a little bit in the background. So just this little technique really soften, overall soften your landscape and create because it's it's transparent as well. So it's gonna once it's dry, you're still gonna see all those colors through. I'm just going to take a little bit of what's on my brush and add a little bit to the top. I'm going to rinse my brush out. Okay, I'll just quickly dry this off and then I'm going to come in and add a cabin and a fence. Okay, so I'll just spin it around so you guys can see how pretty it looks. I love these colors. It's going to look so pretty when we add the glitter and the bow and the hook. But first, we are going to paint a little fence and a house. And I think we will, yeah, let's paint the house first. I'm going to take a little flat brush here. I think I forgot to show you this, you guys, this one at the beginning. Um, and I'm going to use some black and some red and a little bit of blue for the base color. You can use straight black if you want. Okay. And right here. So this is dry so I can I can uh, rest my ball on the table now. And I'm going to do apply a little slant. A slant here. I'm going to slightly sloop down scoop down, slope down, cut across, paint that in, and we have our roof. And then I'm going to go right across the bottom and create a skinny rectangle, or yeah, skinny rectangle. Okay, and then we'll do the roof line. So now we have a triangle and then we'll just gently pull down for the front of the house. Now I'm going to take a little bit of white, mix that in, and I'm going to pull across inside and fill this in. And then I'm going to go under the roof line. And I'm going to go across the top, a little bit of yellow, pink, white. You want to leave a dark line to separate your roof line from the side of the house. Not only for separation, but for a dark shadow. I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I'm going to take black. And I'm just going to carefully go right underneath, clean that line up. I'm going to take the corner of my brush, tap, 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 tap. The end of the hose, tap, tap, tap. Just by tapping like this, 
you can make it look like a log house. And I'm just gonna pull along there and inside the roof line there. Rinse this out once more. I'm gonna go back over to my little round brush here and I'm gonna take a little bit of tinted white from the red and the yellow and just pull a few lines. Just a little suggestion. It doesn't take a lot to create some detail. And then I'm going to take a little bit of black again. Every time if I add something inside the house, I want to make sure that I clean those roof lines up again. Now we're going to have a chimney. So at the chimney right here, just a little mini rectangle and then a little diagonal line for the shadow. I'm going to add a little door, some trim for windows. So put a line on either side where I'm going to have my windows. Wash my brush out again, dry it off. And you can choose what color you want your the light inside your little house to be. I like making a peachy color, more on the warm yellow side. So I just mix that up, have a little ball on the tip of my brush of paint. And dab for some little windows. I also like to have a little bit of it reflect outside the house and then I want to make some smoke coming out of the chimney if I added white it wouldn't really show up so I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to my white and I'll just turn it this way so you guys can see a little bit better I'm just gonna take tip of my brush wiggle wiggle and then push and smush to make it a little bit bigger and then soften with my finger. Now I'll come in with a little bit of white. Rinse that brush out and I'm gonna come back over to my mini flat brush. And I think actually let's make some turquoise bright green turquoise for a cool shadow on the roof. So a little bit of lemon yellow, blue and white. And we'll just carefully cut in here. And just add a little bit like that. And I'm also gonna add a little edging on the other side there and then a little bit of the base of the house. And then a little bit right on the other ends of the house. Okay, I like that. I think that we can come in with a fence now back over to my round slash liner brush because it is kind of a, a thicker liner brush either round or liner will work just fine so let's take let's go ahead and take black blue turquoise and red and let's see let's start our little fence a little line there's a little bit of water
see the little lines closer together. And then we'll have them get a little bit thicker. want to have a shadow, a little bit of a shadow, just a little line. Make sure your shadow is not as dark as the thing you're painting. And then we'll go around and we'll add a few more little fence posts here and there, just so that it continues. And then we'll come through and join them. Less pressure back there and then push a little bit harder. I'm just going to go over this. This one's here a little bit more. And I don't want it to look like there's black smoke coming out of the house, but I want it to be a little bit more visible. So I'm just doing a, adding a little bit of, a bit more gray there. Okay, so we've got fence, another fence there. And maybe we can add a little bridge back here for something different. So with my dark Base. I'm going to come up and over, make it a little bit thicker. Obviously it's a bit big compared in comparison to the house, but this is a different scene on this side. Or you could just make your bridge smaller. I'm going to scoop down, up, down, up, and down. So you can easily add a little bit more to your bridge by doing that. And I'm just going to pull down a bit of a reflection here. Pull. So pull right off of those center pieces. And then you can, and this is with a lot less paint, obviously, right? Because it's just a soft reflection in the water. And I'll just come in here and clean a little bit of that off. I'm going to take a little bit of height off of those. I'm going to just bring this down a little bit lower. Take a little bit of white. Go up. You can make it look like it's got some stones, like a old stone bridge, by just tapping a little bit of that tinted white. And then I'll go back in for a little bit more black. Just to even that out a little bit. Add a 
bit of a shadow, shadow, just with a bit of black. I'm going to go back over to my little filbert brush, or a little mop brush, sorry. You could use a filbert brush, and I'm going to take a bit of blue, and tap, tap, tap here. And then a little bit of white. to tuck that bridge in a little bit with some snow around it. Light little pull and flick down. Take a bit of blue and red, tap in the middle, so then the rest just looks like a reflection. We've got to add um, a little bit more. here and I'm going to take some white and a little bit of red play up on the pink a little bit we've got that pink up here we can add it there gosh these colors are so pretty Let me know what you guys think below if you're enjoying these colors and this painting today. I'm just going to add a little bit. I'm going to turn this over. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of light coming in right there. I think I preferred the turquoise there. Quickly just make up a little bit more. And apply it. And then a little bit of yellow, a little bit more white. And I've got to add some snow to the fence. And once we do that, then we can dry this all off and apply the uh, gloss and glitter. So I'll take my round brush again. And because I've got pink there, I'm gonna use some turquoise for my snow. You can use either more of the yellow to make it more green and I'm going to add a line of snow 
on the inside of each post. And then just little dabs there to make it look like it's going farther away. Okay, and then barely touching Could add a few little turquoise minty accents here because it's very complementary to that plum and pink. And let's hop over to this side. Now I've got a little bit more turquoise here, so I'm going to use the pink for my snowy highlights or snowy accents. And go right over the top. And then maybe just add a little something on the bridge, top of the bridge. And break up a little bit of that blue. We'll add a bit of pink right there. Okay, well, I think that we are ready to dry this off and come in with our layer of glue and glitter. So we'll be using this and this. And I'll be right back. Just before we add our glue and our glitter, I wanna sign down here and I'm just gonna use a Sharpie because it is so small and hard to use uh, even the micro mini for me. So I just use a little Sharpie. There's many different colors. You can even use uh, metallic ones, metallic gold or silver. And I'm just gonna sign well, maybe right here. And I always like to put the date for the year. So it's 2022. You just want to make sure that it's all dry before you do this, of course. Okay, so there's my little signature. And I'm just gonna give this a little shake. Okay, so I just poured a little bit of my Mod Podge out. I probably got way more than what I actually need, but place it here. And I'm gonna start from the top. Again, my ornament is completely dry. And I'm using high gloss Mod Podge. You can use whatever either you want. I'm going to use this to add my glitter to as well. I just want to get the whole thing completely coated. You want to do this quickly before it can dry you want to add your glitter. Okay, so just make sure. You don't have any missing spots or big huge lumps. I'm 
brush my brush out right away. And I'm just going to add a little bit down here. My glitter and I'm going to spin it and sprinkle it on. So we get a nice even coat. And already you can see just how pretty it looks. Don't forget about the bottom. Okay, so very pretty soft. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll meet you back here for creating our bow and applying the hook. Let's make our bow, which we're going to apply to our hook with. And for the bow, I like to make it before I cut it just to make sure that I have a big enough or enough to work with and I don't cut myself too short and then pull to the size you want and just kind of yeah eyeball it there see what works for you if you like the way it looks now there are fancier hooks out there that you could get but if you want to do this on a budget and you don't really see the hooks on the tree anyways. The bow's going to stand out. Um, there are other hooks out there, but I like to use these. And I'm going to just take my hook, go through the organza, push, pinch the bottom, twist and turn it over. And then I'll apply the glue. Be careful when working with a hot glue gun, of course. So you want to load a generous amount in there. Take your hook. Gently push it in until you don't see the end of it anymore. And then readjust your bow. Pull it back out a little bit. Hold and press. And apply some more glue if needed. And it's all done. I think this makes for such a beautiful gift. You're going for Christmas dinner or Christmas parties, office parties, secret Santa. You can personalize them with names, dates. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I've got another one coming up. So head over to Patreon if you would like to see that one. And I'll have a link below. Merry Christmas, enjoy the season, and thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more. Bye, everybody.